Hello and welcome to part three of the online tutorial series that's been designed to help you make an application to the Rocket Grants program. In the next two sections I'll show you some examples of work that will help you understand the scope and intention of this grant. In the first two years of the grant we funded 22 projects, most though not all at the $4,000 level. Of these, slightly less than half were awarded to individual artists and the remainder to groups of one kind or another. Around 50 artists have been included directly in the awards and many more than that have been associated in some way with the various projects. I'm going to show you a brief overview of some of the projects that were awarded rocket grants over these last two years. Some have been completed at the time of making this video, while others will be unfolding throughout the year ahead. This sample of projects illustrates the diversity of media, structures and venues, but you can find out more detailed information about all the awarded projects on the Rocket blog, both in the project section and by following posts in each project category. Point of Interest was a National Park style interpretive kiosk outside the artist's family home. It contained illustrated historical accounts of the site going back 300 million years, interpretive discussions of the dwelling, its current inhabitants, including his family and pets, and some of their notable behaviors and adaptive mechanisms. Flyers were posted regarding changes in the weather, fire risk and rules of engagement with the resident fauna, and annotated maps and informational pamphlets were available for the taking. A short hiking trail was also installed in the front yard and backcountry permits were available for picnics in the yard behind the house. Prop 8 on trial was a multimedia performance about the 2010 trial challenging California's proposition to ban same-sex marriage. The original script used more than 12 actors to portray over 40 attorneys, plaintiffs and expert witnesses and telescope the trial's key arguments into a performance that included video evidence submitted by the plaintiffs and professional and amateur media coverage of the trial. Performances included a reading on KKFI radio. The S'mores Grant Project is a capital raising opportunity that benefits and enriches public spaces and seeds information for spontaneous education and information exchange. The artist generates funds by selling s'mores from a street vending cart and distributes partial profits in the form of microgrants to individuals or groups in the community that are involved in public art. Johnny America is a web-based and print zine that's been published once or twice a year since 2003. Editorially, the zine's focus is on the short and very short forms, and the content is fiction and humour. The publication has an interest in sophisticated but handcrafted design. The team silk screens their covers, for example, and binds each issue by hand. They printed a Halloween issue with glow-in-the-dark ink and have sewn mini-comics into the binding of their main publication. We involved a collaboration between multiple visual artists, lighting and sound designers, and performers, including both dancers and musicians. It transformed the traditional one-sided transmission from performer to audience disrupting and challenging everyone's roles and relationships. The audience was guided through a multi-part environment in the abandoned office suites of a downtown high-rise. Performances were extended outside through the windows to a neighboring rooftop and the street below. Dancers, musicians and viewers were also brought face to face in close proximity creating both private and communal moments. Audience size was limited to create an intimate scale and in every performance, a dancer performed one-on-one -on -one for a random viewer. Each individual's visual experience in this multi-perspectival setting was unique and even the performance itself varied each time. 
This Place is Crawling with Creatures was an immersive art science program for kids that aimed to awaken and heighten the creativity and curiosity in children. It encouraged unrestricted self-reflection using responsive teaching methods and community involvement. Students aged 9 to 15 worked towards the creation of a biome, combining ecological fact with their imaginations. They created life forms for the ecosystem using writing, illustration, painting, theatre, foley or other media of their choice. The project culminated with an exhibition of students' work and a performance by all the kids. The Centre for the Advancement of Transmodern Awareness, or CUTTER, was an experimental public think tank located in a storefront used to host performances, lectures, workshops, free school programming and other community gatherings. Architectural and environmental design elements were important in the space and it included a 10-foot tall, distended, geodesic sphere called the Calm Dome. The dome contained a multi-sensory trance environment that could play pre-programmed video and sound compositions or be controlled in real time by the user. Cutter also included a small research library and a retail component focusing on handmade items. Haven is a working sculpture and a kind of memorial to recent alarming collapses in global honeybee populations. Concerned about the possible devastating loss of these pollinators of nearly one-third of our country's food supply, the artist milled the hive's form on a CNC router out of pristine white corian. An entirely new kind of hygienic beehive Haven is designed solely for the benefit of the bees and not for the harvesting of their products. The tall post allows the hive's placement in urban settings like this public garden downtown, and an informational plaque directs visitors to an associated website. This is the prototype for similar hives that will be installed in public spaces across the country. Dust is a musical video project. Kansas City artists were invited to create all the sets, costumes, lighting and more, and provided most of the acting talent. The film was then shot and edited in collaboration with national figures, such as New York City-based musician and video artist Casey Fisher Spooner. A big goal of the project was to build new working relationships that will strengthen the local arts community. In addition, the high profile of the visiting artists will continue to spread the word about Kansas City talent on a national and international level. This concludes part three of the online tutorial. More work examples can be seen in part four.